put this guy in because I had very low expectations on this one. I feel like it uh, probably is not going to turn out well. That thing looks like freaking candy. That's so good looking. What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Bee Fishing. Today, well, let me just tell you what's been going on. I lost like a week, week and a half worth of footage uh, due to bad audio, you know. Can you hear me now? Bad audio, I've got it fixed now. Unfortunately, that footage is gone. I'm gonna either have to reshoot it. Some of the stuff that happens on the water, you just can't reshoot. I mean, it's just stuff that happens off the cuff. It's just, you, you just can't reshoot it. But hey, you win some, you lose some. But I've been in the shop this morning and I'm making baits. Let me show you what I've been doing. So these are the baits that our buddy Bill ordered. That is a uh, watermelon red. I don't know if y'all can see the red flake in those, uh, those curl tails. We've stuck the lens a little bit. So we've got some stick baits. We've got some little uh, curly tails. And he also wanted some of my ultra white uh, with silver swim baits. So I've got, the, got that done. And then I got to thinking. You know, I've shot a couple bait making videos, but I've never actually shown y'all, like I've got a mixing block where I can do two colors at once. It's called laminating or dual injection. And you end up with something like this. This is a Guggenbait's drag and drop where you get this little laminate where it's, you know, nice pumpkin on top, white on bottom, but it's got like that belly of like a fish. So when you're doing like a, you know, a, a drop shot this actually looks somewhat natural colored and I got to thinking I've got some watermelon red I've got some extreme white that ultra white that I use in my swim baits it would really be nice for me to go over how I get a blend like that without the C block without the mixing block um, and I'm gonna show you that today with something you probably have in your pantry so stay tuned and uh, let's do this it's gonna be a lot of fun let's go all right so you may be asking yourself at this point uh what am i going to need for this well the things that some of you may or may not have are molds like this this is a do it finesse nightcrawler mold it's a six inch finite or six inch Nightcrawler mold. This one's painted with some engine enamel paint, uh, high temp enamel, just to give it a little bit more of a shine. Um, but again, the shine on these worms, really for us, not the fish. It does, fish don't care if your bait is a matte finish, because once it hits water, it actually gets a little bit shiny. If you didn't know that, that's why when you put oil on it, it looks shinier. So, what we're going to do is we're going to have this upper part. This upper part be that watermelon red. The bottom part, I want to be white. And normally what you would do is you would actually have a laminate block. If you wanted to have a smooth, clean cut, you weren't going to shoot with a dual injector. Those can be upwards of, you know, 30, 40 bucks. And it's just a flat block that attaches to this. You insert and it only does half of the bait. But there is something you probably have in your pantry at home that will do the exact same thing. And uh, all you got to do is remelt some of your plastic. And that is aluminum foil. All you need is a little bit of aluminum foil. You cut it to shape, which are these, because I've been using them already. You cut it to shape and you're gonna slot it right in the middle of this mold, like so. And then you're gonna shoot it. And once you've got it in the middle and you shoot it, you will have a perfect half. You just take the other half, put it back in the jar, and you know, remelt it. Let's go over the rest of the stuff that we're gonna need. But these are the two big things along with your... So you've got your molds, you've got your uh, aluminum foil. We've also got our C-clamp so we can clamp these molds shut. I've got my injectors. I've got my colors already mixed up because again, Bill's baits. So we've got my swim bait and my um, worm. Both of these, the swim bait's got a little bit more of a uh, kick to it so it's not as soft, but it's going to be the minority piece to those molds. It's the very bottom. So this is actually pretty soft. I think it'll be pretty finessey. Uh, and then, as always, use a respirator when you're doing this stuff. This stuff is actually really harmful. The fumes are not very good to breathe in. Definitely cause cancer somewhere down the line. And, of course, we have our old thermometer so we can see how hot it is. This is still sitting at just below 200 degrees. Warm these two back up to about, I don't know, 320, 350. Um, and we will begin shooting these uh, molds. And we're hopefully going to end up with something that looks a little bit like this guy. 
just a cleaner look because you'll see some of these actually bleed a little bit. See that green on the bottom? It's bled. That's how you know that they did it with a, uh, a dual injection. We're going to do it with a pure clean cut laminate. So it's going to be a lot cleaner, a very defined line. Hopefully it's going to look, ah, and the fish will think so too. And uh, we can set the hook on a couple of them. So let's get started. First off, we have got to get rid of these guys. I'm just going to set the knives to the side. That one actually came out pretty clean. So we're going to take this into the microwave and this guy into the microwave as well. We're going to start on a minute and a half. Nothing too crazy. We don't want to burn the thing up. Let's go ahead and also get the aluminum foil positioned in these molds. So basically, what we've got, and you can see kind of where I like the injector part right there. Um, so we're gonna sit this like so, just like that. And then we're just gonna close it. Should look something like that. When you look down in there, you see a little split. We're gonna take our clamps, clamp it shut. I mean, almost no cost at all, no time at all. It uh, should make for a good looking mold too. Something like that. I've also got these molds labeled where you'll see a T and a B. So that's the top of the mold, that's the bottom of the mold, just so whatever color I shoot, I know which one that I'm taking out. So you see the T and the B? So when I go to shoot them, I don't get confused and accidentally pull out the wrong one because I really don't want to take them out of the mold um, once I've shot it. I'll, sh I'll show you what I'm talking about. All right, I'm throwing my mask on at this point because uh, the fumes are starting, they're gonna start coming back up here at about 250. Definitely, definitely have a family that needs, uh, needs my support, so. We're going to just leave this mask on and I'll just be super, super muffled. Another thing I want to bring up in this video is if I look like I am in a little bit of pain or I'm leaned over a little bit, like sort of hunched, you know, my posture is not exactly the greatest thing in the world to begin with. Um, but I've realized I'm getting old because I hurt myself in my sleep. I, apparently I just slept wrong and I've got a little bit of neck pain today. Um, it's when you know you're getting old. So when someone goes, oh man, you don't look so good. What's going on? And you're like, oh yeah, I was resting. That's how I hurt myself, resting. Oh yeah, starting to look good. We're nice and liquidy. I would say we're probably around 350 or over. Uh, well, close, we're at 325. So I think that's actually a, not a bad temperature to go ahead and shoot it. I just wanna make sure I don't have too many air bubbles uh, floating around suspended in that plastic and it doesn't look like I do. Most of it's near the top so I'm pretty happy with that. Let's go ahead and shoot these two molds real quick. Alright, so if all goes well, the green should be done. We should be done with the top part of the mold. So I'm going to start warming up the white while this is cooling. And we'll crack this open in just a second. So hang tight. Alright, so while that's cooling down, let's go ahead and crack these open and see what we got. Again, now I want the green on top, so when I open this up, I want the bottom to be the one that comes out. Alright, so there's my bottom. And all of that can actually be gotten rid of. So there's the bottom of the baits. We don't need any of that. That's actually going to be what we want white. So we can take that off 
throw it away. Let us just check and see how the this did. It does not look bad. It looks pretty good. So what we're going to do is we're going to peel that part off. We don't need that anymore. We're actually done with this because we have a perfect half already in there. So we're going to close this back up. We're going to do the same thing with this guy. Again, there's the, uh, the bottom. We're not concerned with the bottom, so we can take that off. We want to break this. So we can inject more, fill this guy back. All right, so we're done with the aluminum. It's done its job. So there you go, there's a half right there. Took my respirator off just for a second. There's the half. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna fill in this half right here. So we're gonna close that up. We're gonna fill the white from the top and it's gonna fill in the remaining area. And then we'll have a nice mix. And I feel pretty good about that, 330. I can live with 330, that's a pretty good high temperature. So let's inject this into these molds. Again, we're only doing half, so it shouldn't take a whole lot. And here we go. And now we wait. Oh man, my neck still hurts pretty bad. I mean, yesterday for real, couldn't move my neck at all. Like, not at all. Could not move side to side, up or down. Uh, nursed it back a little bit today, so we're feeling a little bit better. But let's, uh, let's give these molds just a minute more. I've actually got concerns about one of them. I don't feel like one of them shot all the way, but I could be totally wrong. I feel like this guy is gonna be trouble. I just didn't feel like I got enough enough white in there. It gave me back pressure too quickly. This one I feel like did really well. So I got high hopes for this one. We'll just have to see about this one. All right, it's been a couple minutes. Let's, uh, let's crack this thing open, see what we got going here. Maybe, just maybe, we have a nice watermelon red with a white bottom. Oh yeah, that thing looks like candy. I mean, look at that. That thing looks like freaking candy. That's so good looking. I really like that. If y'all want a better look, that's what they look like up close. Nice pearl white bottom. You can almost see through that tail a little bit. And then uh, watermelon red on top. Because of the white, the watermelon red looks like super light. Also, it's a real thin patch, but that's a pretty good looking bait right there, if I do say so myself. I really like that a lot. Um, I could have stood to go darker like a pumpkin, like actually was in that Guggen baits. Um, but I really like that. It's not a bad color at all. Really, really light, light color. And let's see what this guy did, because I had very low expectations on this one. I feel like it uh, probably is not going to turn out well. I was wrong. This one actually looks looks totally fine. Uh, looks really good, in fact. So there's that one. And again, we got a full pack of these worms now. All right, so there you go. There's a full pack of these guys. A full half and half down to the taper of the tail. Um, you can see where I'm going with this, though, because you get something like something very similar like that although mine is much lighter because I'm using again a watermelon red and really ultra white versus they're like almost white pearl gray with a really dark uh, pumpkin on top actually similar to something I've made before which is this guy um, pretty similar to these guys which is a really nice looking bait pearl bottom Pumpkin mix on top with a bunch of different color glitter. Again, 
just trying to match this guy and give you some ideas on some cheap ways that you can do a two-tone color like this just by using something in your pantry, aluminum foil. All right, guys, let's go do it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you learned something new. If you've got molds like this, you do not have to have a, uh, a, a laminate block. You don't have to have a C block or a mixing block to do dual color. You can actually use something like aluminum foil and get something of the same effect as this guy. Look how wiggly that thing is. Gosh, I love it. Now, it's still warm. It hasn't cured all the way, so it's probably going to harden a little bit. These guys look great. It's something I could definitely fish with. Um, I would like the color a little bit darker, but again, this is just to give you some ideas on things that y'all can do at home. Um, different ways to go about it, and it was actually really easy. Didn't really take up much time. Um, we got one bait, and I think this whole video took me 23 minutes to shoot. There you go. I mean, just some good looking two-tone bait, soft plastics, that all you need to do is go to your pantry and get some aluminum foil, and then cut it the size of these molds, and start shooting it's real real easy uh gives you a nice custom effect that you can go out and do so do the same things on your cinco molds um your your crawl molds any mold really you can do this with and it gives you the uh the effect of an actual fish you know with their white bellies dark tops i hope you guys enjoyed it if you're new to the channel uh, i don't normally do bait making videos like this often but i will if y'all request them um, and different ways you want to see baits made, uh, different colors, how I come up with matching colors, um, how I go through that process, the trial and error of it. That would probably be a pretty good video. Or if there's anything else you want to see, we're always making videos. Me and Chris are always out making videos. We're about to start the backyard tour here pretty soon. Backyard tour, if you're not familiar, we did this last year, where we go to bodies of water that we don't have a lot of familiarity with or have zero familiarity with that are in our own state, in our own backyard. We explore our own backyard and uh, try to find new places to catch fish, which is something I encourage all of y'all to do. Explore new places. Don't just go to the same old place. Hope you'll tune in to the next one. And uh, as always, hit the like button, leave me a comment below, and smash that subscribe button and turn it gray. We'll catch you on the next one. Later.